Welcome to this DME On Demand presentation for the Standard Written Order, or SWL. The information given in this training is correct as of today. The most current information related to this topic can be found on the Noridian Medicare website and the CMS website at the links listed on the slide. The Standard Documentation Requirements Policy Article A5542-6 specifically addresses orders and face-to-face -face requirements. Remember that the Standard Documentation Requirements apply to all DemiPost items. The article can be accessed by following the path listed here. The SWO is required prior to billing for all DemiPost items that are not currently subjected to the written order prior to delivery, or WOPD, requirements. With this change, the only WOPD items still on the list are the power mobility devices. The SWO must be dated on or prior to the bill and date. Here are the elements of the SWO. This is the only order that is needed. Notice there is the option to use the beneficiary's name or the Medicare Beneficiary Identifier, or the MBI. The order date will be the date the request was communicated to the supplier. A general description of the item, the options, accessories, or supplies can be listed on the same SWO or on a separate one. Either way, there will need to be an order for everything that is billed to Medicare. If dispensing more than one item, the quantity to be dispensed is needed. The treating practitioner's name or their national provider identifier, or the MPI, is needed. And of course, the practitioner's signature is needed as well. Please note that the signature date is not needed, but it would be a best practice to have it dated. The order can be generated by the treating practitioner or the supplier. The frequency, duration of use, or refill requirement are not needed. So how do suppliers know how many supplies to dispense each month or how long the order is good for? The supply orders are valid for a lifetime unless the medical necessity changes or the local coverage determination, or the LCD, or state licensure guidelines indicate otherwise. Therefore, suppliers are able to dispense the quantity indicated each month. For example, if the order states 180 catheters, the supplier is able to supply 180 each month. Keep in mind that anything in excess of the normal allowed amounts will need to be justified in the medical records. Suppliers will need to have a new order in their files if any of these situations pertain. For all claims for purchase or initial rentals, if there is a change in the order for the accessory or supply, on a regular basis if it is specified in the documentation section of that particular medical policy, even if there is no change in the order, suppliers must comply with the specific policy. When an item is replaced, a new order is needed to reaffirm the medical necessity of the item, or if there is a change in supplier and a valid order from the prior supplier cannot be obtained. An SWO may act as the WOPD when a WOPD is required. There is a master list of items created by CMS that may be subject to written order prior to delivery and face-to-face -face evaluation and or prior authorization. That list is currently available in the Federal Register. From that list, the required list will be finalized by CMS. The required list will contain codes subjected to the face-to-face -face evaluation and WOPD requirements. Until this is published, only power mobility devices will continue to require written order prior to delivery in the form of the SWO. None of the other codes are required to have face-to-face -face or WOPD documentation unless otherwise specified in the LCD. Keep in mind, this is only until the required list is published. Then, any code currently on the master list is subjected to these requirements. The only difference between the WOPD and the SWO will be that the WOPD needs to be received prior to the supplier providing the dummy pose.
When the required list is published, the items appearing on that list will need a face-to-face -face within six months of the WOPD. However, this requirement does not supersede any specific LCD requirements. For example, CPAP will still require the compliance criteria be met, follow up with a physician between 31st and 91st day, monthly evaluations are still needed for surgical dressings, etc. There are two distinctions on completion of the face-to-face -face and WOPD. For power mobility, the practitioner completing the face-to-face -face must also complete the WOPD. For all other demipose, the practitioner who completes the face-to-face -face does not have to be the ordering practitioner, but the ordering practitioner must have access to the face-to-face -face encounter. Face-to-face -face examinations may be conducted via CMS-approved telehealth. Just a couple of additional notes for the face-to-face -face as well. A qualifying face-to-face -face will be required for every new order for items on the required list once it's published. One face-to-face -face may be used for multiple demipost items. However, all ordered items must be addressed in that face-to-face -face visit addressing both objective and subjective assessment of the beneficiary's condition. A few other reminders, the date of the SWO must be on or prior to the date of claim submission. PRN orders are still insufficient to justify payment. When the prescriber is also the supplier, the SWO is not required, but all elements of the SWO must be within the medical record. Prescriptions are not considered part of the medical record and signature and date stamps are not allowed. The LCDs, Policy Articles, and Standard Documentation Requirements Policy Article can be accessed through the Noridian Medicare website by following the path listed here. The Standard Documentation Requirements Policy Article can also be accessed from the CMS website at the link listed here. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our tutorial. Continue your learning experience by referring to additional recordings available on the Noridian website or YouTube channel.